Welcome to the Divine Eventide podcast. I'm your host, Stacy. Please show your support on your favorite social media. You can find this on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Just search for Divine Eventide. And if you're interested in other ways of supporting this project, please visit the podcast's Patreon page. Thank you. Now, here's some good news. From AFP News, animal shelters across the United States are emptying out thanks to the coronavirus pandemic, as people confined to their homes are adopting or fostering animals in droves. Kitty Block, president and CEO of the Humane Society of the United States, said as the COVID-19 outbreak took hold, shelters, many of which were forced to close because of stay-at-home orders, launched adoption appeals, and the response has been overwhelming. Dogs, cats, rabbits, guinea pigs, and even hens have found homes as people all over the country look for pets to help them cope with confinement. Shelters nationwide, from Wisconsin to North Carolina and Virginia to Colorado, are reporting that the number of people fostering animals has also skyrocketed. Sherry Franklin, founder of the Muttville Senior Dog Rescue in San Francisco, said adopting or fostering a pet during these unusual and stressful times is beneficial for both animals and humans. From CNN, Stan Hurd has been making art from the earth for almost 45 years, and he's done everything from a four-acre large piece in southwest China to a 1.2-acre piece for the Minneapolis Institute of Arts. His latest installation, though, is a little different. The 69-year-old Hurd took his talents home to Kansas, creating an installation as a tribute to healthcare workers on the front line fighting coronavirus. The installation, titled Tribute to the Frontline, takes up half an acre and is in a field south of Lawrence, Kansas. It features 10 echinacea flowers, commonly known as purple cone flowers, displayed in a vase with the words thank you printed across it. All the details are intentional. The vase is styled after those by Native American tribes in Kansas, and the cone flowers have historically been used by different tribes for, among other uses, medicinal purposes. All the raw materials used come from Kansas. Heard created the cone flowers from henbit weeds, which bloom with purple flowers, perfect as the flower petals on the cone flowers. The plan was to leave the henbit plants and mow around them at varying lengths, thus creating the different colors displayed in the final product. But while he was working, the henbit plants lost their flowers. That's why the petals in the final piece are green, though Hurd said it doesn't bother him. All in all, the piece took six days to finish. He hopes it reminds others of our collective shared humanity, something he said has been brought to the forefront because of the pandemic. From the Hill, a police department in Laconia, New Hampshire, formed a heart with their cruisers outside a local hospital in honor of staff that are continuing to work on the front lines of the coronavirus pandemic. In photos posted on Facebook by the Laconia Police Department, nine police cruisers could be seen parked outside the Lakes Regional General Hospital, arranged in the shape of a heart. The officers were also joined by local firefighters and EMT staff during the demonstration. The police department said in the Facebook post that they organized a show of support for health care workers and that they invited their friends from the Laconia Fire Department to join in the effort in order to put a smile on the faces of these heroes during one of their evening shift changes. Kevin Donovan, who serves as CEO president of LRG Healthcare, said that hospital staff appreciated the gesture from local first responders. They're about taking care of each other. They're about supporting each other. It's about showing each other and coming together to take care of everybody. It's just really nice, he said. From CBS News. Meet Buddy and Barley, known collectively as the Brew Dogs. They've been bringing joy and beer to residents of Huntington, New York, since stay at home orders have largely confined people to their homes. With a coronavirus pandemic forced lockdown, their owners, who are now their bosses, said they've had to redefine their brewery business after being deemed essential and thereby allowed to remain open. 
Karen Hewetter and her husband Mark own a local microbrewery on Long Island called Six Harbors Brewing Company. When the coronavirus pandemic hit, Mark said they didn't know what was going to happen. However, he said business seems to be working out with the help of their trusted canines. Karen pointed out that using the dogs for deliveries helps them maintain social distancing guidelines, putting them and their customers' minds at ease. While they hope this kind of cheerful and unique delivery system will keep business going, the Hewetters admitted that times are difficult. Mark estimated the business was down 60 to 70 percent of what it normally is and said they brought in family to help in the meantime. The pair said they were hopeful their new options will be able to pay the bills, while their newest four-legged employees brighten people's days along the way. From CNN, Kimberly Wynicki says she knew she loved two-year-old Jaden the minute he came into her family's life. Wynicki and her husband have been foster parents for over a year, and Jaden has been with them since last May. In my heart, I already knew I wanted him, Wynicki, who lives in Fort Smith, Arkansas, said. They found out Jaden was going to be put up for adoption in February. We knew the day they terminated the parental rights that we would be adopting on April 16th, Wynicki said. They knew that day would be a special one and started making plans. But the coronavirus pandemic meant those plans had to change. The pandemic altered daily life in the U.S. and around the world, including how court hearings are conducted. Many are now done online, and Wynicki realized Jaden's adoption would be no different. We see all the pictures after the adoption day. They're standing there with the judge. Everyone is smiling, Wynicki said. We didn't get that. Instead, Jaden's adoption hearing took place via a Zoom video call. But Wynicki said the adoption was no less special. Sometimes it feels like not real. I mean, we sit and look at him and we're like, he's ours. But it's like we didn't get that experience. From CNN. An Easter tornado took an irreplaceable military quilt when it destroyed Beulah Lockmiller's home, but through the kindness of strangers, it was returned to its rightful place. Larry Lockmiller, Beulah's husband, served in the Army National Guard for almost 30 years and was deployed during the Gulf War. The quilt was a piece of that history for his family. It consists of his patches, places he traveled in the military, and pictures all arranged around a poem that he wrote in Saudi Arabia during his deployment. When a tornado came through Chattanooga, Tennessee on April 12th, Beulah's home was destroyed and her dresser that contained the quilt was missing. The family looked all over the property, trying to see if it had blown close by, but they had no luck. They then took to Facebook to try and find the missing quilt, and the great-niece of the woman who made the quilt got a hit from a local reporter. The reporter remembered taking a photo of it in his coverage of the tornado damage, but when they went to the site, it was gone. They used the reporter's photo to spread the word even further, and after thousands of shares, a woman named Pyler Estrada and her son Aaron said they found the quilt. Soon after, the Lockmiller family was reunited with their precious family quilt. Beulah's granddaughter, Lauren, said, quote, My grandmother was very, very, very emotional because losing my grandfather was losing part of herself. So ever since he passed, she's just been hurt. Losing another part of him and getting it back was very bittersweet, she said. This has been a little light in the darkness, a pleasant surprise. And that concludes this episode of the Divine Eventide podcast. Please don't forget to search for this on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And also, there are more support options at the Patreon page. I'm Stacy. Thanks so much for listening.